Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, a great day, God bless you. Um, this is Chandra Davis here, amen, and I'm just getting on here for a little bit, um, just to share with you, I'm sorry, let me make sure this is right. Amen. Amen. So, amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. A great big God bless you. This is Chandra Davis here with Kingdom Awakening Church. Um, and <clears throat> today I just got on here. Um, I'm actually going to be doing, this is one of a series of uh, foundational teachings that I'm going to uh, be doing for our prerequisites for our school of supernatural equipping amen we thought we would do it in a few places we would do it here on social media as well as our youtube page amen just to help fill in the gaps for other people as well me and my husband we've um, been in ministry for a while and we've um, we've noticed that in training other ministers and even in ourselves there are certain gaps that we've had and certain gaps that we've seen in other people who operate their gifts and are doing other things but certain gaps in their foundation and so um, God has been telling us for a while to really just to create a series of teachings um, that will help fill in the gaps amen and so I wanted to start very they're very very basic topics but a lot of people don't fully understand them so we want to do this today we're going to be talking about um, salvation um, under this is salvation 101 understanding your salvation amen and so um it's so important that we uh, understand our salvation and what it is all about um, and so we're going to be sharing these and so as as always whenever we share a video you want to watch you want to learn and apply um, the principles and then you want to bear fruit for the kingdom amen and so um <clears throat> it's so important um that that we understand what our salvation is that we understand that the bible it's a book that has god's word in it but it's a book that also has history and records and um it has examples and laws and patterns and principles and so um it's important you know that we we understand what god is saying to us as we take uh on Christianity and so many people I meet that say they're Christians but they don't understand their salvation so in order to understand your salvation we first have to um, we, we first have to understand uh, the creation we have to understand our, the creation story and and what that was about so we can understand what salvation is amen and so um, I want to I'm going to kind of walk through this and you can feel free you know when it's over that's why we're making videos to always just to um, look you know look back and read the scriptures because I might be moving a little bit fast I tend to speak fast I'm trying to in my mind to say slow down a little bit so um, in order to so we're going to start with um, Genesis 1 but before I say that I want I want to just put out here that um, our salvation it is a person <clears throat> and a person who was a king and a priest and he uh, leads a kingdom amen and so um, in Genesis 1 I want to point out the setting of Genesis 1 Genesis 1, um, God is in this setting, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, and they are in the realm of the sphere, amen. The Bible um, says very clearly in Genesis 2 when they move into the earth realm, but right now in Genesis 1, they are in the realm of the sphere, and they look into the earth, right? And what happens is when they look into the, work, in the earth, they see that the earth is without form, it is void, and it is dark. And so, um, you know, in these videos, this is what I meant to say, actually. Um, in the videos, we're going to be looking at a lot of semantics, which is the origin of language, and a lot of metaphysics, which is the origin of a thing, a concept. Like, where did it come from? We have the law first mentioned, like, where were these things first used? In the Bible, uh, many people in the Hebrew time, the Bible time, they understood certain principles, certain things at the time. So whenever there was an example or a pattern or a law or something, they better understood it and unfortunately through time a lot of these things got lost and so this is where we kind of get these misunderstandings and these gaps and we don't quite understand where things fit or we think like certain things don't work but we just don't understand the origins of when something just because something means something now that doesn't mean that that's what it meant when it was originally created and when it was written in this bible right and so these words um, without form void and darkness and so the origin um, in, in the Old Testament it was in Hebrew and so the word formless uh, which was two hour which is means confusion unrealty emptiness wasteland wilderness place of chaos and vanity 
that the earth was without form. The earth was, it was void. It was buau, which means void, empty, wasted, un undistinguishable ruin. Okay. And then it said darkness was over the face of the deep, which means obscurity, not clear. Darkness, secret place. It means night, misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. Right. And so God looked and he saw all these things. And so let's make it clear that the whole power of God, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit were all there. They could see everything, but nothing changed until they opened their mouth and they spoke. And, and nothing changed until he opened his mouth and he spoke let there be light right we have to understand that these words um just because the way they translate we see one english word sometimes there's many hebrew or greek words that mean this mean this thing this is why the bible says that we need to study to show ourselves approved because um so we can rightly divide the word of truth and so um that word light let there be light there in the old testament is is that word we see the word light but in all the different times that they use it it's 15 different hebrew words that they use it for but the one here when God says, let there be light, he's talking about um, illumination in every sense, which is luminary, which is like the stars, the sun, right? But then he's talking about daylight, light, clear, and morning, amen? It's so important that we understand that because sometimes when he's saying light, he's talking about an actual light, but then sometimes he's saying in our understanding, in our clarity. He spoke into the, vo the, the voidlessness. He spoke into the void. He spoke into the darkness, and he said, let there be light. Let there be illumination. Let there be clarity. Let there be morning. Let there be day, right? Let um, us be able to see. And so I wanted to pull out a couple of principles so we can uh, understand. It's a pattern that we're about to see when God created the earth. But first, I want to point out the fact is that when God wanted something, the first thing he did was he spoke it. And it's important that we understand who God is because the more we understand who God is, the more we'll understand who we are because we were made as we, we keep going down. We'll see we're made in God's likeness we to made to look like God. I mean, he's made in God's image. We're made to look like God and made in God's likeness. We are made to be like God. So it's important to point out that when God wanted something, he spoke it. Okay. And so um, we're, as we're in Genesis 1, we're still in the realm of the spirit. God is speaking from his realm. And I want to point out that the realm of the spirit, because God is the spirit, it's also known as the eternal realm because God doesn't die. So he's eternal. It's also known as heaven, right? So any of these words I'm using, people we, we use interchangeably um, because the spirit realm where God lives is also heaven, is also the eternal realm, okay? So God is, he's not in the earth yet. He's still in Genesis 1 in the eternal realm speaking, right? And so God, he creates everything in his realm. He speaks it. And so when God wanted grass, herbs, and fruit, he spoke to the earth. He spoke to the ground. Okay, and so if you remove the grass, the herbs, or the fruit from the ground, they die, right? And if you don't eat them soon, they will rot, right? Because they were made to be a part of the ground, a part of the earth, part of the tree, wherever they come from. And so he made them, and when, if, whenever you remove them from them, they die. So, then, so God made lights and he made stars in heaven. They were made to be in the sky. When he wanted them, he spoke to the heavens. So remember, there's a heaven that God is in, but then there's a heaven that's the sky here on the earth. God spoke to the sky and there were, there were lights and there were stars. If you remove those lights and stars, you see sometimes mediators and things fall out of the sky, they die. So God created the lights and the stars. He created them to be in heaven. When they fall out the heavens, for whatever reason, they die. Okay, this is a pattern. God wanted fish in the water, so he spoke to the water, okay, to get the fish, the creatures in, in, in the water. He wanted them, so he spoke to them. And so um, if you take fish out of water, they die. They breathe water, they don't breathe air, so if you take them out, they die, right? God wanted birds in the air, he spoke to the air. When you remove birds from the air, they become prey, P-R-E-Y, and they will eventually die. They have a better chance of dying um, than, than the, in, in the, on the ground than if they're in their natural habitat, which is in the air, because they weren't giving that defense system to be able to operate on the ground. That's why their ground is the air, okay? And so God created the beasts of, of the earth, of the, you know, of, of the earth, and if you remove an animal from the earth, if you kill an animal, he dies. Same thing as people. But here's the thing. God created man. When God created man, he spoke to himself. He said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, right? And then he, he gave some instructions. And so we have to understand that if you take man away out of God, then he dies. So we have to, it's a couple principles there that the true man is a spirit because all this is going on in the realm of the spirit. And if you, he was made 
to be an extension of God the same way the grass, the herbs, and the fruit were made to be an extension of the ground. The, the, you know, the lights and the stars were supposed to be in the heavens. The fish was supposed, and the creatures were supposed to be in the water. The birds were supposed to be in the air. The beasts were supposed to be in the ground. Man was supposed to always be in God. And so when you remove man from God, man dies. Okay, so this is a principle. This is a pattern that we are seeing during the creation story, right? And so, so far... We, I, I just want to um, do a quick review. We're, um, got it. We're still in the spirit realm. But we have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, he's looking at the earth, speaking into the earth. When God wanted something, he spoke. Man is a spirit made in God's likeness and image. We're made to look like God and to be like God. And when you remove man from God, he dies. All right? So that's what we have to remember from Genesis 1. I want to move to Genesis 1, 26. Um, this is the creation when God creates man. So God created man and he told him five things. He said, I want you to take dominion. He said, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to replenish the earth and I want you to subdue it. And man is still a spirit. This is still going in the spirit realm. All Genesis 1 is in the realm of the spirit. Okay, versus the eternal realm, the heavenly realm. Okay, he made it clear when he went into the earth was in Genesis 2 when he said, and he went into the earth. That's why they repeat the story. I know I, I went to a Bible school and they, they tried to teach us that, uh, oh, it's the way literature is written or something or something, but I'm sharing with you, listen, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. We're sharing with you with revelation from the Spirit of God. You can receive it or not. It's your choice. Um, I'm doing my part. My mandate is to teach these foundational truths. Amen. And you can wrestle with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, um, <clears throat> so in Genesis 1, dominion, that word dominion, God said take dominion. It's the uh, word rada in Hebrew, and it means to rule, to dominate, to tread down, to have dominion, to subjugate, to scrape out, take prevaileth and rain the word be fruitful is the word para which is the branch off increase grow and bear it. the word multiply is rabba be of it's be or become great many much or numerous to make large increase more exceedingly long store abundance greater and the word replenish is mala to fill be full abundance be accomplished be ended to consecrate fill the hand be armed, be be satisfied, complete to confirm, to mass themselves again, to set together, overflow, set holy. And subdue is kabas, which is to subject, subdue, force, keep under, bring into bondage, make subservient, force, and violate. Okay? So we have to understand that we are made to look like God and to be like God. So God told us to dominate the earth, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, and to subdue it. So he told us basically to increase in the earth and he told us to control the earth, to let it be under our subjection when we were still a spirit, okay? When we were only a spirit. So in Genesis 1, God made man, the spirit, um, to look like him and to be like him. And he gave him instructions of how he should be. Basically, man is how God is in heaven. God is like, I'm going to make man to be like this in the earth. And this is what it looks like. It looks like you take the man, you dominate. It looks like you be fruitful, you increase in what you're doing. It looks like you multiply, you become big. He said even a small nation will be great, right? And he said you replenish, you become full, you become abundant, you become accomplished. And he said subdue it, bring it under your subjection, bring it under your control. Bring it under your control. And so I want to be very clear that God is talking about the creation, but he's also talking about, because we're about to move into Genesis 2, where God gives man a body and God gives man a soul so man the spirit is supposed to also take dominion replenish uh, uh take dominion be fruitful multiply replenish and subdue his own body and his own soul right oftentimes we you know we miss this fact that our soul and our body are supposed to be subjected to our spirit and it's a reason why and as we go through or go through the fall and see what happened we can see why people are ruled by their body and by and by their soul but this was never meant to be and this is why salvation comes into play so just to be clear god took, gave instructions on what he has given us as man he's given us his image he's given us his likeness and then he gave us instructions on what that looked like it looked like we dominate it looked like we reign we rule we, we, we multiply ourselves we multiply what we do we be fruitful and we take control over what he's given us okay so moving over genesis 2 genesis 2 is when god begins to operate in the earth because now he goes into the earth and he gives man a body he took man he took the dirt of the ground and he gave man a body and then it says he breathed the breath of life which is man's spirit it translates as spirit he breathes his spirit into his body in the earth and he becomes a living soul okay so we have to understand that god gave man a body which is in one place which it came from the dirt of the ground 
and it's going back to the dirt of the ground when you know when you take about like i said the animals when you take the, remove the body from the earth the man in the earth dies okay his spirit doesn't die because his spirit was made from god in the eternal realm and it's eternal so all of our spirits will never ever die and this is why salvation is an option for us because so we can spend eternity with god and not with the enemy right so okay god begins his work in the earth in genesis 2 and please go back and read genesis 1 2 and 3 read it in several translations reread it reread it until you begin to get the revelation amen and so uh, god is working the earth he creates man's body and he put he breathes his spirit in him so you have to understand man's spirit was made to be in god in the spirit realm as well as in his body in the earth so we are multi-dimensional we we're made to be in our bodies here on the earth and we were made to be in god in the heavens okay this is why in salvation we're in jesus but many people if you don't understand the beginning you don't understand why things are how they are how god created us to be okay so um we are multi-dimensional our soul translates as self appetites desires mind emotions passions will and character right so here's the thing our body is supposed to to do what god does on the earth um what god does in the heaven our body does it in the earth our soul is like the processor or the go-between that's supposed to hear what god is saying to our spirit take it and give it to our body and our body is supposed to follow this is how we are supposed to operate this is how god created us to operate he created us to operate where he would speak to our spirit our soul says gotcha okay and then he says it to our body and our body does whatever we say right um but unfortunately because of the fall things got out of order and we are struggling and fighting to try to get back in order right okay so in genesis 2 god after he treats the man he breathes his spirit into his body. The man becomes a living soul. Now he plants a garden, the Garden of Eden. So garden translates as an enclosure or a garden. Figuratively, it's actually uh, the Hebrews understood when they talked about a garden, they were talking about a marriage or a chaste woman, which is still another version of what they look for in a marriage, right? And so Eden meant delicate or pleasure or delight. And so God placed the man in an enclosed marriage with himself in the delicate place of god's delight and pleasure god made us because of his good pleasure he placed the man in a good place he went into a marriage covenant with him and he had he had him in there good so an overview of genesis 2 god made man as an extension of himself to rule reign and dominate earth as god does in heaven man is supposed to rule reign and dominate his body and his soul along with creation God put man and himself in a marriage of pleasure and delight. That's Genesis 2 and that's in the earth. So now we're going to move over to Genesis 3. Because in order to explain salvation, we have to understand the creation and what happened, why we need salvation, okay? So Genesis 3, um, you know, because of the fallen angels is why the earth was in darkness and void and in um in in chaos or whatever the words were be a dark without form um but that's going to be another video that's not our focus but because you know misery always loves company so we have the fall of man where the enemy uh tricked you know adam and eve to to listen to him over god and so we have to understand that they rebelled against god they broke their marriage covenant with god that they broke the covenant with god which was their marriage and so that got them put out the garden put out the marriage but what they didn't know was what they lost because the enemy is a trickster he never tells the truth and he's never honest and uh he never tells you what's really going to happen so what happened was now automatically by default they they came out of marriage covenant with god and they entered into a marriage covenant with the devil so whenever you marry a person they now own what you own there is no prenum agreement in the realm of the spirit so whatever you own they own so now basically they pretty much lost their dominion their ability to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, and to subdue the earth, subdue their soul, subdue, subdue um, their body. So now the enemy has he basically stolen all of everything that God gave man. Okay, and so um, they they you know, they lost their ability to that to the, to that whatever. What we don't know absolutely will hurt us. The enemy did not tell them that he tricked them. Um, you know, what we don't know, what hurt is he told them, you'll just be wise. He didn't tell them you'll be coming into a marriage with me and you'll be giving me everything you own. But that's essentially what happened with Adam and Eve. So they lost connection with God. And remember the principle from Genesis 1, um, when man is out of God, he dies. And so surely what God said was truth. So 
they they lost connection with God. Uh, it's the principle that we take man from God, he dies. Um, that's why God had to come down into the earth and say, Adam, where are you? Because he knew that Adam had the, the spirit realm, right, out of him. And so they found out that God was telling the truth. He said, if you, you know, basically if you eat the fruit, you're going to die, in which his spirit did die. So now Adam is being run by his body and his soul because his spirit is dead which was never the order that god created right and so when we don't have a, our spirit operating correctly and god is not giving us instruction this is what you have when you can look around you and see what you have people run by their body and their soul so um he found out that that, that god was telling the truth the devil was lying um, and he introduced him to new concepts. These new concepts now were fear. They were hiding. They were blaming and accusing one another now. And so God was like, okay, um, I, like y'all got to go now, but I'm going to help you out. So now God had to pronounce a curse. He pronounced a curse on the earth and pronounced a curse on them. God was not being mean. <clears throat> God had to kick them out of Eden because they were tainted. God wasn't being mean, but God knows who he is. God knows his standards. God is not accepting anything below his standards. His standards is holiness. They were tainted. He's like, I'm not taking you tainted. I'm not taking the earth tainted. God is perfect. Um, and God, but He he's also um, gracious and kind and merciful. So he had a solution. So in Genesis 1 13, he's like, listen, he, he's like, there's going to, don't worry about it. Cause your seed is going to bruise his head and his, his seed is going to bruise your heel. Basically it was a promise of a Messiah. It was God's solution. God loves us so much. He's like, listen, um, people think, you know, cause God is mean. He cursed the land and cursed the, the man and the woman. He cursed them because he did not want them to live in this tainted state forever. He's like, I'm going to let this play out. Because you guys are eternal, I'm not just going to destroy you, but I'm going to let people choose what they're going to do. Because now they got the knowledge they can choose uh, if they're going to live for me and spend eternity with me, or they're going to live for the devil and spend eternity with, with the devil. Unfortunately, people think there's an in-between, but there's no in-between. If you refuse God by default, you're in a covenant with the enemy and you will spend eternity with him. His eternity is hell. His eternity is a lake of fire. Um, and the sad thing is it wasn't made for man. It wasn't made for you and I. But because men refuse to follow God, they refuse to stay in covenant with God, um, they join the devil because they are in covenant with him during uh, this time. And unfortunately, many people are in covenant with the enemy and they have no idea that they're in covenant with the enemy because just like Adam and Eve had no idea that they went in the covenant with the enemy, many people people by their actions go into covenant with the enemy and so um, but God gave a promise and the promise was for a Messiah a Christ a Savior all meaning the same thing the anointed one the anointed one that brings salvation okay um, so salvation there are um, there are five different words in the Old Testament how it translates and two in the New Testament I'm gonna go through those so the law first mentions like where it was first mentioned in each one and so the most common one used in the Old Testament was um yashua yashua is another name for jesus so remember our salvation is a person who is a king and a priest and who leads a kingdom right so yashua literally when they said salvation they were saying yashua jesus okay um genesis 49 18 uh when jacob said i have waited for thy salvation O lord that word translates as yashua which means salvation deliverance welfare prosperity victory Help, helping something saved. That's the most common use. The second time in Psalms 27 and 1, also in 1 Samuel, when they were both used, it's, it's a, uh, a differentiation of, of Yahshua. It's Yesha. It's the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? That word translates as deliverance, salvation, rescue, safety, welfare, prosperity, victory, and saving. Right? And then in 1 Samuel eleven thirteen, 13, um, and Saul said, there shall not be a man be put to death this day for today the lord have wrought salvation in israel that word is tashua which is rescue deliverer um excuse me deliverance help safety salvation and victory and then in psalm 68 and 20 um he that is our god is the god of salvation and unto god the lord belong the issues from death that word is masha'a which is deliverance or salvation and then isaiah 59 and 16 and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness um it in righteousness is sustained he sustained it and that is yesha which is to be safe avenging to be open or wide free defend deliver help uh, preserve rescue having salvation to get victory 
okay um and those were the old testament ways word definitions of, of salvation and then the new testament they only had two different words and um the first time they were mentioned was in luke 169 and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant david that word is soter which is the rescue or safety deliverer help salvation save and saving and then luke 2 and 30 for my eyes have seen thy salvation that word is soterion which is the derivative of that of soter which is defender defense or salvation and so the only difference i would like to point out is that in the old testament the word help it's a lot of different words who god is um because what we lost got the all those things god comes to rescue us to give us those things back um but the difference is the word help and helping was in the old testament um translations but not in the new because god gives us the helper he gives us his spirit to empower us to be our helper our paraclete translates as our helper and so he took the word out of salvation because god is the deliverer he is the christ the messiah the anointed one that brings salvation but when we accept jesus christ as our lord and our savior he gives us his spirit he gives us the helper okay so he's still helping us but he gives us the person of the holy spirit which is another video we're going to do a whole lot of series of basic teachings to help people fill in the gap for their foundations and this is salvation 101 understanding your salvation amen and so um i remember our salvation is a person who is a king and a priest and who runs a kingdom okay so when we receive jesus christ as our lord and our savior we receive salvation Okay, and I just gave you the definitions of salvation. It's healing, it's deliverance, it's safety, it's preservation, it's wellness, it's victory, right? It's restoration of what was lost. What was lost was our dominion, our ability to dominate, our ability to, to put things under our subjection, um, to be fruitful, to multiply, replenish, and subdue the earth. Our ability to be great, our ability to multiply, it was stolen from us. This is why many people struggle in life because of the things that were stolen from them, right? And ability to subdue, subdue our own flesh, subdue our own our own bodies our own soul to subdue the things that are around us the earth was made to yield to us uh, he said dominate the earth it was made to yield to man by what we speak when god wanted something he spoke okay and so remember jesus is the second adam god was the first adam and so what happens is when we see jesus christ as our lord and our savior we receive salvation we lost the um you know what we lost he brings it back jesus adam jesus is the second adam um adam you know many people are born to a disadvantage amen because god said before you were in your mother's womb i knew you and he spoke great things over us but david said we were born in sin and we were shaped in iniquity so something happens in the womb what happened when adam went to that covenant it, it basically things go through bloodline he gave the enemy access to our dna as human beings so the enemy sneaks wicked dna in our in our mother's womb because before we were in our mother's womb god knew us but we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity it's like something's going on here right in the womb the enemy um sneaks in this wicked dna and so this is why when we accept jesus christ as our lord and our savior we have to deny ourselves pick up our cross and follow him because we don't know who we are because we're born in sin shaped in iniquity many people um, need to be restored by things that they've never had in their life they don't even understand what love what peace what joy what certain things are um certain parts of themselves because they were stolen before they were born right but god still gives us his salvation he promises to rescue and to restore us to the marriage covenant to the enclosed um enclosed enclosure of delight and pleasure he he promises to restore to that even if we've never experienced experienced it many people have never experienced pleasure and the light of god in this world right they've only experienced hardship and downtrodden because it was stolen from them while they were in their mother's womb through this wicked dna through their bloodlines okay and so we we have to understand what you know what the problem is and why we need salvation and why we have to walk out our salvation amen and what what, what it is we're even gaining back many people understand they're saved but they don't know like what was it that I lost? They have no idea. What was it? Like, they don't know that they're supposed to be multiplying. They're supposed to be fruitful. They're supposed to be replenishing. God gave us the ability to increase and to dominate. And if you are not dominating, if you are not increasing, if you are not subjecting your own body, you know, you have all these addictions and different things, like, you have to walk out your salvation and allow God to restore you. But here's the thing. Um, through time, God shows the story of salvation. Okay. Uh, he shows the story of salvation through choosing a special people, 
God, uh, um, the, the goal was that they would first, you know, work the salvation and then the world would follow. But unfortunately, we because of what the enemy did, we have the right to choose. And they chose to reject the Savior, right? They, we have free will. Um, they chose not to accept the salvation. And so now, you know, we... You know, we have the church, amen. But here's the thing it started with God's special people, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who became Israel. They showed us, um, they gave us the law, the Ten Commandments, the tabernacle, the temple that was to show us the do's and the don'ts of what we should and shouldn't do. It was also to give us an image of heaven. We know the tabernacle and we know that the temple were images of what heaven looked like. Then they had judges, kings, and prophets. It was to give us principles of how the kingdom works because our salvation is a person who is a king and a priest who rules a kingdom. And so we, when we gain our salvation, we become a part of his kingdom. So we read this Old Testament. It's concealed inside the Old Testament. The do's, the don'ts, the, the what heaven looks like when we go spiritually into the heaven realm. Because remember, our spirit was created to be in two places, in God and in our bodies, okay? And so what did he shown us what it looks like through these special people, through this Old Testament and then he shows us these principles of the kingdom so we look at the judges we look at the kings we look at the prophets what they said what they did these are principles and lessons to learn how to operate today so our salvation is a king and a priest who leads a kingdom the prophets prophesied the coming of a, a savior of our salvation that he be born of a virgin in a, of a virgin in a manger you know we have all this the Christmas story and I want to point out that Lord means Kairos Kuros which is supremacy supreme in authority controller god lord master or sir savior means a deliverer god or christ right it's so important that we can't only make jesus our savior we also have to make him our lord he has to be supreme in our life he has to be the controller in our life he if we want salvation if we want back what we lost our dominion our ability to be fruitful to multiply to replenish and to dominate he has to be supreme in our life. He has to control our life. If we make our own decisions, he's not our Lord. If we go where we want to go, he's not our Lord. If we live where we want to live, he's not our Lord. If we marry who we want to marry, he's not our Lord. If if we, um, I don't know, choose the job we want to choose, he's not our Lord. If we choose the church we want to choose, he's not our Lord. If we choose, then uh, it doesn't even matter. The friends we want to choose, he's not our Lord. He chooses these things. He controls us. He has to be supreme. You know, the Supreme Court in the States, Whatever they say, that, that's that. I mean, they can try to outrule them, but once they rule, they're supreme. They're over every other court. It doesn't matter what the courts underneath them said. Once the Supreme Court says something, that's it, right? So if he's going to be your Lord, you have to listen to him. Jesus said, why call me Lord? And you don't listen to me. You don't follow me. You don't even seek my face, right? And so we have to remember that when God wanted something, he spoke it. So when we're talking about salvation, when we, we have to make Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. So we have to believe in our heart. That Jesus Christ was born of a woman, I'm excuse me, born of a virgin. He's God, that was the son that was born of a virgin, that he died on a cross and was raised on the third day, and now sits at the right hand of God. So we have to believe it, but then we have to actually confess it out of our mouth. When God wanted something, he spoke, so we confess out of our mouths. Amen. Um, it's so important that um, we understand when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, he gives us his spirit. His spirit empowers us to live the way that God has called us to live. His spirit empowers us to um, to do what we need to do to restore everything that was stolen from us. It's so individualized. Like our fingerprints, no one has the same fingerprint. No one has the same eye retina. No one has the same hair follicle. So what was stolen from us and how it was stolen from us and what the open doors and what the situation is, it's so individualized. This is why we have to follow the spirit of God. The Bible says we are no longer subject to the spirit of sin and death, but now we're subject to the spirit spirit to this um the spirit of life the holy spirit we have to follow the holy spirit we have to um we have to get into a place where we're used to following the men and women that god gave us but following the spirit of god uh, like in them parallel to them because it we, we get these far left rights you know we, we are like oh well we don't need any person to follow we can just you know follow god but that's not what god says you know we he was like how were you here without a preacher so we follow who god wants us to follow but ultimately we're following the spirit of god we're listening for what the spirit of god is saying we're, we're weighing anything anybody says to us we're having three-way conversations with the spirit of god okay god well, what, what is this you know what does this mean to me is this something you want me to eat now is this something for later uh holy spirit lead me guide me it's so important that we're all jointly fit together 
when Jesus said, listen, the law and the prophets is all summed up to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. See, all the Ten Commandments, everything, it was like love God, love people. So God, we're made jointly to fit together. He's not saying be an island on your own, do what you want to do. He's saying to love him and to, to love people. He's saying to 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 follow like whoever he puts over you or whoever, you know, to, to, to you know, because church was his idea, not ours. Marriage was his idea, not ours. So he he's like, listen, um, you know, basically like respect those who have the who have the, the rule over you, but he never said be dominated by them. He never he, God never gave anyone um gave anyone uh what is it called authority to dominate another person he told us to dominate our own body our own spirit our, to dominate the creation but never each other right and so ultimately we have to choose and decide what god is telling us to do and the thing that's important to understand is that god will never go against his word and anything that god says to you, you can find in the word of god the old testament is concealed but you can find what, what what if god is saying it to you god will show it to you in his word i'm a little weary about people who are constantly hearing from god and it's never bible because when i I came to God when I was in college over 20 years ago um, everything God spoke to me I literally would find it in the word and so when people were saying oh God is saying this and doing that and, and it's never ever found in the word I'm a little leery because we live in a prophetic generation but people have to understand that um, that there's the enemy and then there's God the Bible says that we need to try every spirit by the spirit to see if it be of God the only way we can try a spirit is we have to know the word of God so you have to be reading your word God will never ever go against his word and, uh, I've always read that it's church was God's idea marriage was God's idea people are not getting married people are like oh, I can just live together it was God's idea for marriage not man's church like I don't have to go to church church was God's idea not ours right when we when me and my husband were starting our ministry I was like oh it's more like a ministry than a church and God said call it what I said it I said oh my bad let me let me call it. you said like he's like it was my idea not man's we can't decide uh to try to do our salvation our way and wonder why we don't get the results of salvation the bible says we have to walk out our salvation with fear and with trembling meaning that we have to do it god's way and not man's amen so listen i hope that was helpful this is our um, salvation 101 understanding your salvation we will probably have uh, it'll be very random, <laughs> like maybe Salvation 102 up to 105. We'll do other topics um, as well, basic concepts, probably like Saturday mornings, but honestly, it'll be random as well. Pray for us. Um, you know, we, we were doing our school of uh, supernatural equipping, and God kind of was like, you know, just, just pause for a minute uh, because people are learning how to operate in their gifts. People are learning how to do all this stuff, but they're missing their salvation. They're missing, you know, we don't want people to end up where I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I've done all these wonderful things. He's like, wait for me. I never knew you because they didn't understand their salvation they didn't understand um just what they were doing they just were having fun while doing it and so we're going to talk about what repentance is we're going to talk about faith we're going to talk about the fire of god we're going to talk about the adversary the keys to the kingdom we're going to talk about the fear of the lord the secret place like if you don't go to the secret place that when he's like i never knew you translate as you have never come to the secret place right that's a better translation but we're going to get into detail we're going to talk about fasting we're going to talk about um healing and deliverance which is just a huge thing people are doing so so much but jesus said us he told us he said he said if you be my disciple you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free why are we doing all this stuff for deliverance he said through knowledge the just are delivered like and so it's it, knowledge of what knowledge of the word of god the word of god is a seed to our salvation the key excuse me to our salvation and but we are getting far from it and so we're just doing our part well we're going to be you know doing these um basic foundational teachings to help fill in the gap and also if you um going forward when we do uh, come out with our school of supernatural equipping these are a prerequisite amen so listen um facebook and and uh youtube and wherever else we put this um thank you for joining us god bless you and have a great day